artistle. Then the people who are just like Mr. Gansu, Kesha, Dean, and your group of show, just like Mr. Something artistle. Thank you very much for inviting me here. I speak here both as a subject and also as a reader. I have a direct stake in the cause that we are talking about today. It's not just India and China. Essentially, we are talking about Tibet, which is my country. I'm an activist, I'm a writer. And however India and China pretend to think it is about India and China, without solving the issue of Tibet, India and China are far placed, distant uh, neighbors. Ever since China invaded Tibet, then we started to talk about India and China. 1962 se pehle kuch India ki puri ka mention bhi nahi tha. Swansang aaye the barson saal pehle seventh century Swansang aaye the. There was only mention of China in India history. So let us be practical. Let us, let us be here and talk about the realities. There's no pretension that can solve uh, practical common day realities. In the year 2012, when Xi Jinping came here, I was speaking here at the India Habitat Center. And as the tea break happened, we were having tea outside and our group came out. I was physically lifted by eight burly men, literally kidnapped out of the room, into the kitchen dumped into a car, driven to Malvinagar police station. And only there they took the blind off my eyes and then said, we are placing you under special preventive detention. So usually what happens is um, Indian intelligence officers give us information and tell us where Xi Jinping is going to go and do things and tell us maybe that's a good idea for you to timely do your action. And when we go out and protest, then the police come and arrest us. So is the issue of Tibet just useful for the intelligence officers to provoke us to become an irritant? And is it only uh, useful for the police to arrest us and then say, we have done our duty? And finally, India would say, we didn't stop, we were going to so issue of Tibet here is much larger and bigger and cannot be, uh, cannot be left out of this. And however, Professor Jagannathji says when Xi Jinping comes here, let us pretend not to talk about Tibet and let us talk India-China. <coughs> not possible, sorry. Uh, here, when we talk about India-China, we are talking about 2.5 million square kilometers of land, which is two-thirds of India, which is one-fifth of China's 9.6 million square kilometers of land. That is there. And um, when we talk about Tibet, we are also talking about this country, which is between these two uh, Asian giants, which emerged later. But this is a country which China says is a part of China and therefore makes a claim over Arunachal Pradesh. India says, no, no, Arunachal is our country. But that is based on Medmohan Treaty, a bilateral treaty signed on 27th of April 1914. And this is the historical, documentational evidence India provides. At the same time, India says, Tibet Autonomous Region is a part of China. If Tibet Autonomous Region is a part of China, then Arunachal becomes part of China today. So So if India truly makes this claim over Arunachal Pradesh, 90,000 square kilometers of land as a part of India, then India cannot escape history. Whether India continues to support the Tibetan independent movement today or not is up to India. But India cannot escape history. India has to 
agree, recognize that in the history, Tibet was a free and independent with whom we signed, we signed, British India, we signed Magmohan Treaty and therefore we make this historical, documentational and legal uh, claim over Arunachal Pradesh. Otherwise, you are giving it to them. This uh, syntactic intervention made by Atal Bihari Vajpayee government saying Tibet Autonomous Region is a part of People's Republic of China. Tibet Autonomous Region created in 1965, uh, People's Republic of China created in 19, uh, 1949. We then are talking about history, and it is history with which India is making claim over Arunachal Pradesh. Important point I wanted to make here. Another important point, important point. Tibet today has not been um, reapproached by India, and therefore India has been suffering. How? I'll tell you. When India first signed 1954 uh, Panchil Agreement, making Tibet as a part of China, um, you know, making that recognition uh, one of the first in the world, India was insecure. India was divided. There were many, many issues. Some of the states were still free and independent, like Sikkim or Goa. So therefore, India needed China to give this recognition to Akhand Bharat, uh, United India. Today, India is stable, secure, except for the issue in Kashmir Valley. But India, in reciprocation to one China policy, one India policy, India, India is having recognized Tibet Autonomous Region, uh, uh, which, which, okay, Tibet um, or Tibet Autonomous Region, which is overall 2.5 million square kilometer of land. East Turkestan, which is 1.8 million square kilometer of land. Inner Mongolia, which is Southern Mongolia, which is 1.2 million square kilometer of land. Manchuria, which is almost missing. In India, it's only uh, chicken Manchurian. And then, then there is an, uh, uh, Hong Kong, and then there's a Taiwan. Look at this diplomatic equation, lopsidedness of this. How? How is India continue to con uh, maintain this relationship where we are having to give so much of recognition, 9.6 million square kilometers of land, and they are having to recognize only uh, our, our uh, India's insecurity is only Kashmir Valley. Why is India not revisiting this? There is so much of leverage India could uh, earn in this, and, this and, and, and India is not able to do this. My last point. In the Tibetan community, uh, what is called the middle way approach, seeking autonomy, um, it's, it's, it's considered that this is uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's policy. And the previous prime minister of Tibetan government exile, what diplomatically is called Central Tibetan Administration, says that uh, one of the reasons is to adhere to India's one China policy. Otherwise, India may force, forcibly shut down the exile government. And that was a compelling reason how Tibetans quietly from inside felt that we have to adhere to India and because we have been seeking this shelter in India for all these years. So therefore, that compelling reason was one of the reasons why Tibetan government in exile continues to talk about uh, autonomy and not independence. It's not because Tibetans do not want independence. In the heart of heart, every Tibetan, I would say, even His Holiness Dalai Lama would want independence. But we are saying autonomy. And my final point. Xi Jinping is coming, and we are going to go out into the street and protest. Whether China or India feels either disturbed or do not like, we will be there. Thank you.